Killer Penguin. Did you hear about the double amputee who's always losing in court? His arguments don't have a leg to stand on. Jules asks, how often do I go with a poison build on the silent? You love it, but you find getting there is often really hard. I find that poison is a, a really effective strategy for a silent and very much one of the dependable ones when it comes to Ascension 20. In Act 1, um, you really want to go poison primarily against Hexaghost or the Guardian. Um, if you're facing against Slime Boss in Act 1, you could have a much more difficult time picking up poison cards. But generally speaking, poison is an easy addition to almost any deck as a solution for the really high health long-term opponents. If you can get your poison increasing over time, um, primarily with Bouncing Flask, Noxious Fumes, and especially Catalyst, or mul better yet, multiple copies of Catalyst. Um, and even just a, one copy of Catalyst in a 40-card deck can be a damage answer to the late game, to Time Eater, to Hearts. Poison will ideally combo with other debuffs like Weak and uh, Piercing Whale, because you want to be able to punch through enemies that have artifact charges. The big weaknesses of poison are that it lacks the ability to kill small enemies very quickly, like 20 hit point gremlins or the three slavers in Act 2. So supplementing it with cards like backstab or anything that can do 20 to 30 damage pretty quickly. Bane can be a nice answer to that. Uh, generally speaking, glass knife, dagger spray, die, die, die. Oh, but Wokanobi asks, if you whiff on Catalyst, how do you handle debuff removal? Like, bosses that purge their poison count. That can be a problem for, um, for poison builds in particular. The easy answer is to have access to retain, be it through Runic Pyramid or well -Aid plans, and just hold on to your poison card to the correct turn. Um, but the other answer can be building draw consistency with stuff like acrobatics, multiple upgraded prepareds, calculated gambles. The more cards you draw, the more likely you are to have the card you need on the turn you need. Do I have any of the Fangamer STS merch? Hold on a second. I found it. I have... I have the little cultist pin. Kaka! Wiggle your arms, sir. Thank you. Kaka! A super adorable little cultist pin that you can get on Fangamer. I did pick that up quite recently. Super adorbs. So yes, I do have a little bit of, uh, of Spire merch. I hope to get more. Okay. Let's play some Defect here. I'm really, really excited to, uh, to play some 820 here. Oh my, that's a lot of rest sites we could visit. If you wanted to upgrade a whole ton of cards, that could be the use of the Act 1 here. If we take this leftmost path. Starting bonuses, rare card, common relic, 250 gold, or the... The Legendary Boss Swap. And I am a particular fan of Boss Swap. I think it would pair particularly well with five rest sites. Curse for 250 gold could also be kind of interesting, particularly given that the option to go to two stores exists. Or I could go to a bunch of events before the first shop. And then do something like Fire, Event Fire, Tackle the Burning Elite? This is a pretty good opportunity to get that Burning Elite. I like our scrunchy spire that we have. It's like a little tube that is being squeezed in the middle with only a little bit of, uh, of path at the center. Uh, that's a fair point, Shlou. I, I actually, I probably should adjust uh, the, the soul's art upwards a little bit to match. I just hung it on a, there was a nail in that exact spot already, so I just used it to hang, but it does not create the optimum nerd lines, which I do respect. You know, this 250 gold start actually seems pretty appealing to me. Normally, I really don't advocate for curse starts. I'd do it. And yeah, we are playing with a, a new microphone today. This is, a, again, a Shure MV7 podcast microphone, which I'm really excited to be putting through its paces today. Fortunate that we did not get a kill here. That's okay. Wow. 
Wow. That's quite a trio of options for the first card reward. Claw, Sunder, Rebound. I think it's really hard to turn down an early Sunder, though. Absolute slapper of a card. For 24 damage. With, of course, that instant refund if you kill the target. Perfect against Act 1 opponents. Perfect against Act 2 minions. And we're fighting Guardian. Okay, yeah, I'll take it. I like Rebound just fine, too. For the record. But, uh, Sunder would be better. Halt for upgrades. I mean, we're gonna have lots of rest sites up ahead. And this might hit Sunder. I'm okay with anything this upgrades, though. Zap and Defend are cool. Zap Plus means we can play Zap in addition to the Sunder, and here's the opportunity to remove a card um, without paying for it. So we can get rid of this injury and then not be obliged to remove it at the shop. We could also just take more money for the shop by destroying. It's actually a reasonable time to choose to destroy. The additional money gives me more options at the store. We don't need to remove two cards. So it's not like I want to remove Injury here and then remove a Strike at the store. Although we could do that. Maybe I do want to do that. Any reason you'd ever take leave? Well, uh, you need to have a card that deals a certain amount of damage to get the Destroy option. So pray or leave. Um, maybe your only choice is... Apologies for whatever shenanigans the camera is up to. It's going to be weird today. Mostly I don't know how to fix it in a reasonable time frame. I'm gonna opt for the remove though. That does cost us 7 HP. And that would be the reason you would want to take leave, potentially, is if you don't have 7 HP to give. Oh man. Gremlin Horn, Sunder. One of my favorite combos. If Sunder kills an enemy, gain 4 energy, draw a card. And generally speaking, gain an energy and draw a card whenever anything dies. Anything except us. Oh my. Well, welly. Well, well. What have we here? Actually, so retrospectively, I should have destroyed that statue for the extra money because it would have been twice as good. And I would have saved seven hit points. That said, membership guard is still amazing. Costing less than half of our money, it increases our purchasing power. And doubles all money from here. I'm definitely going to pick up a Preserved Insect, making Elites have less HP. We could also take Pennib to make our attacks Bonk Donculus. And then there's some pretty other good cards here too, like Hyper Beam on sale for only 45 gold. It does the big damage, but I'm not actually sure that I need it because I have Sunder and a Gremlin Horn and a Pennib. Although I notably won't be able to put this Pennib to you. Maybe I should buy a potion. Can I buy both relics and a potion? Yes, right? These are 60, 60, or 80, 80 is 160, so we have 30 some number. Yeah, I'm gonna take both relics and a potion. The potion will help me donk an elite. I'm thinking the colorless potion. We'll upgrade Sender for sure, Z's. And I'm going to go to this rest site, and I'm not sure what I'll do there. Okay. Ka ching Feeling really good about this Act 1 so far. Oh, and I'm really happy we got a combat here. Um... I want to increment Pennib as much as possible in this fight. That's my only goal. So I'm just gonna... I'm not even gonna play this Zap. Because of it. To attack me next turn. I do it this way. Oh, right, because we're drawing. Yeah, perfect. Good job, Gremlin Horn. And three more? Yeah, the pin of it's seven. There's the ideal. That's as good as we were going to do in that fight, and that's extremely good. That's more than enough to take on the Burning Elite now. Bruh. Nice. Take all three? I want to! I want to.
What a cool card reward. Well, I guarantee that no matter what we pick, we're going to have an ice time. Yeah, Meltnoy, the, the black stuff behind me is acoustic foam to help prevent echoes from happening in the room so that my voice comes through buttery clear. I think I want this chill, personally, of the three, although Glacier is, of course, one of the best reliable defect blocks. Chill is free. Free is good. Free is really good. It's also got an upgrade that I really appreciate, being able to upgrade to draw guaranteed turn one frost generation. It's exceedingly valuable. Uh, do I need to rest? I don't think so. I think we get to upgrade again. Although I'm not going to upgrade chill immediately. I might upgrade dual cast here. Given that those are literally the only options other than strike and defend, I should be able to pick one in a reasonable time frame, right? Turn one against knob does seem great. Uh, turn one against sentry seems great. Turn one against... It's mostly just collector, actually. Collector and bronze automaton. Which is why I like to... I like to look at act two first, but... You know what? Let's do it now. Let's do it now and see much... See how much we appreciate having it. Small chest inside a big chest. What does it mean? My intended pathing does hit two question marks this act. Tiny chest gains us additional treasure rooms. Normally I advocate for blue key over tiny chest most of the time because you could get something else instead of that treasure room that's better. But notably treasure rooms often contain gold and potentially quite a bit of it. With membership card, that's worth quite a bit more. Hmm. I'm gonna take it this time. One, because we get two question marks this act alone, and two, because of the membership card. We'll see what it does for us. I, I suspect it's a pretty incremental decision one way or the other. There's not gonna be a whole lot of consequence to it. We'll see. Italicize-y. Man. Do I... Hmm. I'm tempted to strike twice so that we can open with Sunder doubled. But that will result in us getting hit. Strike, strike, dual cast. Um, how much is that? 12, 28. So we do 20, putting him at 64. But then four metallicize, so I actually cannot quite kill it. Unless colorless potion assist. Alright, what are you? Aha! Question mark. Oh, secret technique. That's perfect, actually. So that gives us six damage from the zap. So if we draw the sunder, go oh, boop. Nice. Smiling mask here to actually increase the price of card removals at the shop. From what is it? Uh, well, do we get? Do we buy our first removal? No, it's currently thirty-eight gold. So this does make our first removal 12 gold more expensive. Our second removal does not affect. Our third removal is 12 gold cheaper. And we will save 12 gold. Or no, we'll save 25 gold on the fourth and only the fourth purchase. Very takeable green key. I am allowed to take this. We're done with that triple elite challenge and hell yeah, beam cell. Although potentially also hell yeah, charge battery. Especially fighting guardian. Charger battery is pretty, pretty okay. I am more incentivized to go to a large number of stores because of the membership card. I mean, I am going to take it, but once again, we're at a super, super incremental relic that's really not going to give us a whole lot either way. How's it going, Merle? Currently debating beam cell versus charge battery in the current situation with Guardian up. We are going to be fighting potentially a Gremlin knob as well, so that's a good reason to take the beam cell and upgrade it at the fire. 
Yeah, it's just beam cell, right? No, mech stack, no matter, no matter what, if you have Smiling Mask, the card removal is always exactly 50 gold. It ignores all price discounts or increases. I do actually want this charge battery, but I'm going to take the beam cell. Anger the Mushrooms, great fight for Gremlin Horn, great fight for Sunder. And very happy to have the odd mushroom. Also great fight for Chill Plus. How dare you. Crafter Links, thank you so much for seven months. Lucky number seven. Lucky number boop. Actually, really appreciated that we got this event too because it means we can up our pen nib for the theoretical knob. Perfect for a turn one beam cell into Sunder with Flex Potion. Oh, and instead of a charge battery, I can have a genetic algorithm. I think that's pretty good. Hey, Bwapi. Good to have you here, and I appreciate the encouragement. Uh, my mental and physical health is definitely a big motivating factor behind a lot of the changes on the stream here today. And I'm really excited, honestly, just to have my PC back in a way that makes sense to me. Uh, I really did, did enjoy the broadcast I was able to create from my old studio, but it ultimately did feel uh, like something that I was stuck in when I was there, with not a lot of ability to move or flex or breathe. All right, let me go. Yeah, I'm going to go this way. I want that upgrade. I don't think I upgrade algorithm. I'm going to upgrade being so. Though it is sometimes tempting to upgrade algorithm, especially you really want a, a reason to, to need excessive block to upgrade one early. Um, essentially, if you upgrade Algorithm, it scales up 50% faster, which is really significant. And another upgrade. Okay, I guess I will upgrade Algorithm. Sounds good to me. Look at that chill, putting in good work. So I actually don't want to pen Nib Sunder because that would be too much damage. Funny how that works. Well, good. I have not drawn it. Let's block for as much as I can, take two, and we'll clean house next turn. Bonk. Double bonk. And Sender's in the draw pile again, so I could draw it here. Aha! Bonk again! Cool. I'm all about more attacks, thanks to Pennib. I'm all about more frost generation, too. So I really like this cold snap for marrying those two concepts together here for us. A steam barrier is takeable. I guess I would upgrade the Cold Snap immediately too, then it becomes a deal 9. I think it's also reasonable to take a Melter here and upgrade it to be a deal 14. That'll be a great answer to Spire Spear and Spire Shield, as well as a, a number of hits here and there, including Guardian itself. Guardian does make block. Problem is that if we take the Melter, we don't make block. And for that, Guardian will surely punish us. I think I need the renewable frost orb. Am I ever meant to rest here? I hope not. I hope not. Do we have to transform on this turn? Sunder alone will do it. Um, 
This does not. We do 8 plus... 8 plus 3 plus 12. Not enough. Uh, so we flex potion. That's enough. Though just barely. Uh, and that does let us pendip the sender, although I wish it was beam cell pendip sender. Also hurt, unfortunately. I'm just gonna play the algorithm now because it's not a very good block card. So yeah, I can block or I can play Sunder for 64 and take quite a bit here. It does accelerate the fight towards its end quite significantly. Probably better to double defend in Beam Cell. The vulnerable lasts till next turn where it doesn't do anything. You know what? I'm actually just gonna bonk. I think trading the damage is correct. And then we only have to survive through one more cycle, really. Oh, good turn. Bonk. That was a lucky draw. Again? Hmm. Be rude not to. <laughs> like that. Be rude not to. And then we just have ourselves a little bit of a win. GG. It's cool. We traded health with Sunder deliberately there a couple of times and it worked out pretty well. All for one here gets back both Beam Cell and Zap. It'd be pretty reasonable to upgrade the dual cast too. Don't think a Thunderstrike serves us very well. What about a Creative AI? Creative AI could be scaling. Random powers each turn. That can scale up the defenses. That can... Hmm. I don't often take Creative AI. This is, I think, a relatively good opportunity to give it a chance here. As a, a boss solution. It's also a good reason to take a Sneko. Yeah, we already have a sender, so yeah. Okay. Welcome aboard. Creative AI. Welcome aboard. I mean, Pyramid's pretty good, but what about Black Star here? Actually, these are all worth considering. So, Black Star, more relics from elites. Given that our elites are relatively easy to kill, especially Act 2 elites, thanks to not just Preserved Insect, but Gremlin Horn Preserved Insect. Uh, I think we could definitely get our hands on some relics. Big time. Runic Pyramid lets us retain cards from turn to turn. Notably makes Defect's energy generating cards way better. It makes Sunder way better. It makes Genetic Algorithm way better. But we need more card draw for, I think, this to feel particularly good. Astrolabe transforms and upgrades three. Just fill the deck with new and better stuff. That could be completely good. That could be huge, in fact. I think all of these are viable. My natural inclination is to tend towards the pyramid, but I don't necessarily think it's the best option here. Big living room in the sky. No, about Eddie. Thank you so much for six months. I know, we actually have a big living room with a couch that's way bigger than the chair used to be. Hmm. I do like this Black Star a lot. And we already got our green key, too. Problem is, the membership card is going to compete with the Black Star, and it's going to be hard to choose elites versus stores, I think. How did we get so many relics in Act 1? We bought three of them in the same store. And I think we got a random chest. I really don't like the pyramid with this creative AI added. I want a mummy hand now. I actually do think I'm going to lean towards the Black Star. Let's do it. With the preserved, uh, with the smiling mask, I'm less inclined to take the astrolabe. All right, what does our pathing look like? Hello. 
All right, well, Blackstar feeling a little sad. The good news is I can still go to Merchants in addition to the Elites. So two stores and two Elites comes out reasonable here, even if not ideal. And I can get a guaranteed chest before that first store, thanks to Tiny Chest. So we're going to get Tiny Chest value. Baron Ferret, thank you so much for the 20 months, two metric years of support. It's also like this path, <laughs> which gets us two relics quite quickly. It's kind of amusing. I think we want to we wanna start this way. I think we want to start this way. All right, well, Shelled Parasite's going to give us a hard time, I suspect. Since our blocks are a little mediocre at the moment. We should just play the strike. Then I draw the Beam Cell in the Sunder. I definitely should have played the strike. Foolish. Could have killed it. All right, well... I suppose things are going to be difficult then. This does let us get pinned up on a higher number for the next fight, but I definitely would have rather had the hit points there. I do think we want more block cards. Does charge battery feel like the correct play? Not sure. And a quick dad joke for a centenaire. Did you hear that the Energizer Bunny was arrested the other day? He was charged with battery. Ooh, Cursed Tome. We do have a use for all three of the book relics. Double Sunders from Necronomicon is pretty powerful. And could let us take a Doom and Gloom. Main concern is that my hit points... Ow. I actually don't get to rest before we have to fight an elite. I don't think I can afford the 21 hit points, mainly. As much as I would like to. I mean, maybe there's a waffle in the store. But it's not a good odd, you know? With no sustain relics or healing incoming of any kind, as much as I'd love all of these, I don't think I can. All right, I've got a creative AI against the Chosen. Good luck to me. <laughs> Just play Echo Form, forehead. Easy. All right. Works for me. I want to double the genetic algorithm. Hell, I want to play the genetic algorithm, but I'm not 100% sure that I'm allowed to. If I double the sender, he just dies. And then the fight's over. That's right, JC514. Elites can only drop common, uncommon, or rare relics. I believe, if I remember correctly, it's 50% chance of a common, 33% chance of an uncommon, 17% chance of a rare when an elite drops a relic. But I'm only like 85% sure on that. Could also go like double bias cognition, genetic algorithm, cold snap. And then we have a lot of focus with frost. 
Probably I should just play Ascender twice, and we should not do anything that, uh, that would result in potential hit point loss. There's the block card I wanted. Equilibrium. Love this card. Letting you retain your hand for one turn. And I think I'm going to take the Snicka Oil over the Capacity Potion here. There's our guaranteed tiny, ho tiny chest chest. This is a, the largest type of chest, which means that if it contains money, it's going to be a lot of money. There's no money here. But there is a Prayer Wheel, giving us more card rewards from regular enemies. This early in the run, I think that's really good. We won't fight that many regular enemies, but we will fight several this act alone. So at a minimum, this is going to be... Um, we're going to go this way, right? The intention. Probably at least two additional card rewards. Probably more like three or four. This act alone. All right, shop. What do you got? Self-repair, huh? I definitely like Meal Ticket. That's going to give us 15 hit points this act alone. We can also take a self-repair for some sustain, It's also, um, which is on sale. Hey there, Krogzar. And I definitely want to remove a starter card, probably a strike. Actually, probably a defend. We've got a lot of block now. We need to be able to maintain an offensive presence. Card removal is not 25. This card removal is 40 golds. Or, sorry, 50 gold. 50. As, as indicated by Smiling Mask, it overrides the membership card. I wonder if this will update properly. I gotta know. So, gold saved 185. Okay, that did, did register as saving some amount of money. The Smiling Mask, however, saved a negative 12 gold there, apparently. Good job, Smiling Mask. Yeah, the the camera. If you if you've noticed, you you might have spotted that the camera's at the wrong frame rate, thirty FPS instead of sixty. The camera's misbehaving and is going to be replaced. That's what I'm going to say about the camera. <laughs> Do I want an FTL? I think I'd rather have this frozen eye, so that I can know what I'm about to draw. do that. When viewing our draw pile, the cards are now shown in order. But I'm getting Cold Snap Strike Equilibrium. Which is a pretty good reason to Swift Potion, actually. I'm gonna do that. Knowing what I'm drawing. Get him. Alright, you must die first. Really needs a turbo or something. Look at all that block. Is it not beautiful? You're attacking me again, huh? I'm moderately cool with this? I'm moderately cool with this. Shame I can't do the 48 to the leader. Would really appreciate doing that. But we'll take the card draw. Quite happily, I'll take the card draw. Um, do I dare? I think I do dare. So we have 30 block? That's already enough. Don't have to play defend. Good. Hell yes. Set up powers for days. a lot of focus left, but we do get a lot of focus here. <laughs> good. Good. Great. Wonderful. Perfect. Um, just double that. That would give us 11 block out of this Frost Orb. Actually, no, because we'll evoke it, too. Um, so that would be 
14 block plus 15 block is 3 short. Or no, 4 short? Yes, 29 versus 33. We take 4. Arancia, thank you so much for the two months. Been doing the membership to that cozy sub club. Or I can double defend. Charge battery, single biased. Take nothing. Double sunder, kill next turn. Uh, can I get away with double charge battery? 14, 22. Plus invoking this will be 10. Take one to double charge battery. Okay. Works for me. Oh crap. Right. I knew that was a possibility too. That's okay. We got uh, double storm. We're fine. Yeah, we're fine. FBI's most unwanted, the Baker's double does in 25 months. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna go with that went well. We even healed. We now have a boot thingy and a cow thingy. Such that our, oh, and we lined it up with Pendib hype. First attack, each combat deals 16 times two. 16 plus 16, then times two additional damage. Good stuff. AKA eight normally. And 10 Blanc on turn one, making our turn ones a lot better. You know, with a frozen eye, I think overclock is kind of okay. Even unupgraded. And I can make it upgraded eventually, which will make it even better. Let's snag this. Because we know the immediate value of the draw, too. Oh, you're so lucky. Sir. I did not draw my Sunder. And I know that I won't get it with the Snack Oil either. So you may live today. Although we actually just full block, so it's fine. Um, next turn looks kind of sad. I may have to use a snack oil next turn. But my hope is that that won't be the case. Hmm. Actually, not that bad, because we can dual cast a Frost Orb. Yeah, it's not too bad. Okay. Our clock into Equilibrium. Question mark. Yeah. Block this turn. Donk next turn. When our full block value is restored. Ooh, I might even be able to just kill the Shelled Parasite here. With uh, Beam Cell, Cold Snap, Sunder. This is 48. Oh yeah, that's plenty. Next to the additional energy from the charge battery there. We can get this down. And something to note, by the way, is that the creative AI cannot create additional copies of self-repair, although it can create echo form, and then I can use that to duplicate the self-repair. I'm not gonna min-max that hard. Not looking to do that, but it's an option available to us. Ooh, core search. Especially with uh, potentially free bias cogs being at, well, not free, but, you know, with Bias Cogs potentially being created by Creative AI, this is even more valuable. Plus, of course, it's got all sorts of standard uses. I think Cool Headed's pretty reasonable, too, here. Hey there, ASDF. Yes, I'm using a standing desk. Liking it quite a bit so far. 
Yeah, let's grab the core surge. Do I want an FTL or a claw loose? Do my legs get, not get tired? They will definitely get tired. They will definitely get tired. And the idea is that I can sit down when they do. That way my butt doesn't get tired from sitting, which also happens. And you distribute between legs and butt the weight of life. I'm going to take this FDL. Uh, I'm also going to take an additional combat here because of the prayer wheel. Although noting our tiny chest, I will think about double question mark path. But I will not actually go to it. Do I even want to go to that second store? I should reevaluate this. Okay, we draw defendant FTL and then FTL draws the thingy. Get him. Probably should have brought the bird into sender range there, knowing that I was going to draw it so that I could just kill the bird here. That would have been smart. What I chose to do is something else. It was not smart. Now the bird lives. But yes, I should have just put all the attacks on bird here until it was at least 16 hit points. I could use the Snack of Oil to try to bail myself out, but I'd rather do that in a different fight. If the bird is upright, it only takes half damage from all sources. I said we only take four this turn. It's more next turn I'm worried about, since I know I'm not going to be able to kill the bird again and will be vulnerable. This is going to be a gnarly turn. And that's just from direct attack, so it'll still take full damage from other sources. I should probably just use the Snack of Oil here. I'll do that. I don't see this going well otherwise. Good, okay. I accept this outcome. Significantly. Then we'll potentially draw a way to kill... Actually, prefer to kill Chosen next turn, if possible. Let's see what we can do. Bird wasn't even attacking. Well then. Oh yeah, we have Odd Mushroom. That's right, those numbers were kind of low. That makes sense. Okay, I'm relatively happy with that. We got Pennib Sunder, uh, Pennib Akabeko lined up. Excuse me. And there's a turbo. Super duper want a turbo. This deck would love some energy generation. Don't want the other cards. Definitely appreciate a medical kit. Good news is we could afford one if we find one. I'm gonna roll into that shot. I mean, it's still a 15 hit point heal. Yeah, I do want to go to that shot. Yep, I do. 15 hit point heal was enough to seal the deal for me. This way. Oh my. Welcome. Merchant now restocks things and is 20% more cheaper. So multiply a 50% discount and a 20% discount, you get a 60% discount, or 40% of the base price. I guess I could go this way. No, oh, no, no, that misses the shop. What am I talking about? We have Endib Akabeko Sunder next turn. 
beautiful. Bonk. Cycle? And an FTL plus. Or our first orb-related power loop. To essentially give us more orb slots to work with. We're probably going to want to build focus into this, so... Loop is pretty reasonable here. Tough call, actually. I think, again, especially with Frozen Eye, I'm going to grab this FTL. Over the loop. Free upgrade sells it there. How dare you, sir. What a turn to be confused for. Or surge literally on the bottom of the deck. Equilibrium. Better to just play the cinder. All right, creative AI, what do you got? Orb slots. Theoretically, this is helpful. is next. If I can line up the pen nib, I really ought to. And I can. Perfect. Incursion plus, kind of interesting. I don't want a second unupgraded overclock. I don't want a second unupgraded self-repair. I don't want an unupgraded blizzard. Well, it's not terrible, actually. If I take recursion plus and the unupgraded blizzard... I think we have a stew going. I think that'll work. Blizzard's great with pen nib. Blizzard's great with vulnerable. I have a cold snap, a chill plus, and a recursion to create frost orbs. I want to try that. That sounds fun. I haven't done Blizzard in a really long time. So many good upgrades, though. I want to upgrade Creative AI. I want to upgrade Turbo. I want to upgrade Blizzard. I suppose I'll upgrade the Turbo first, since it's a card we'll be potentially redrawing and reusing. And we get a 15 hit point heal plus purchase power. Ori is interesting. Second recursion. I did take that recursion, right? Yes, I did. Ah. Nothing wrong with a card remove. Centennial puzzle is kind of interesting, too. Oh. Let's see, I would remove defend, I think. No, nah, probably another strike. Hand of Greed is really tempting, too, actually. Although I think I've added too many attacks at this point for it to be particularly good. But this would pay for itself so damn fast. You have no idea. Really would need a hologram, though. Ah. And discourages me from actually using my own Blizzard. Ori could be really good. We don't know what's in there, but... The potential. We remove how much do we save? Zero. We save not one singular gold piece on that particular removal. Some best relics for defect. Uh, just a quick, quick few that I really, really like on the defect. Um, bag of preparation and anchor. 
for good turn ones. Um, the data disc for free focus. The orange pellets, shop relic, to let you remove debuffs. Very notably, the focus down of bias cognition. Courier does normally... Does normally lower um, removal price. I don't think the, the smiling mask accounted for that there. Do I take a heat sinks? Yes. <laughs> Greetings, nerds. So we'll draw that defense. So we go chill, core surge, FTL. Oh shoot. Um, guess that was still technically optimal. Whatever. You die. And so you draw that card. Play this. Play this. Sender's Bane. Yeah, really starting to like the Frozen Eye. Eight entire damage. Ten entire damage. Art of War is excellent energy generation by abstaining from attacks. Auto Shield Plus could be an interesting block source, although I like it less with some of the other stuff we have. And I don't really feel the need to flood with more cards. There's a couple of mods, Arceus, that have uh, extended the Ascension system up to 25 or so, both with different takes, but... Uh, those are those are kind of interesting to try playing with. Ultimately, almost any set of difficulty modifiers is going to be winnable at some point. Uh, you know, it's just a question of how much how much luck do you need, how much do you need the stars to align, kind of thing. This is a good fight. This is collector, right? Yeah, I should upgrade Blizzard for this. Ooh, turn one creative AI, spicy. Means we'll skip the core surge, which means I get Art of War next turn for. Uh, well, maybe Creative AI will make something I want to play. Yeah, unfortunately, with Chill being plus here, it's not going to be the greatest Blizzard in the world, that's for sure. Hey, right. we did make something I wanted to play with my energy. And I can do Buffer, Charge, Battery, Defend, No Prob? Next turn we draw this? It's not great. Hmm. We can do 27 damage with that cold snap. If I overclock now, we draw defend cold snap and recursion here. And then next turn I draw... Or sorry, no, just defend and cold snap. Recursion next turn. We draw up to the blizzard. If I can kill one of them, I can get FTL and then turbo. I don't know. Doesn't seem like it's quite adequate. Hmm. Still back of Beko ready. It's a tough call. These torch heads are gonna get buffed, which is the problem for next turn. I'll only be able to prevent a hit from one of them, so Collector swinging in is almost surely going to hit me. Is there no way I can kill a Torch Head? And preserve the buffer? If I want to preserve buffer, I have to just block this turn. Can't play anything other than buffer, charge, battery, defend. I guess we do want a beam cell.
The other option is don't play the buffer, do play both the cold snap and the self repair. Then next turn we have a set of cards with vulnerable on one of them. That would definitely kill one. I'm gonna do that. Just don't buffer. Easy. Actually, 12 plus 27. Oh, that's one short, right? But it'll die to thorns. Okay, so we do self-repair then. Who's the top card of the deck? It's actually kind of awkward. I get a new creative AI, which I suppose I will be playing. Six, okay. I think that means we're throwing the weak potion at Collector here. Okay, here we go. draws burn. That's okay. And that draws FTL. I don't whiff the core surge originally. Did I just choose not to play it? Must be what happens. Do I need to play this core surge? Draw one card, not two. Let's go with yes. Oh ho! And we're rewarded! Beautiful. Easy. We have another buffer next turn, too. I think I'm just going to get rid of uh, Algorithm now, then. That actually lets us preserve the buffer even better. And the zapping begins. More buffers. Nine plus six is not enough, but we have a crossbow. Please yield unto me that juicy, juicy energy. Also die. So this is why Creative AI is good. I understand. This is pretty good. This is this is pretty okay. GG. GG. Hmm. I kind of like reboot with Frozen Eye because we can we can determine whether or not we want to play it. It's also like front-loaded draw, kind of. Is Thunderstrike okay? If a deck wants both Blizzard and Thunderstrike, I suspect something is awry. I'm gonna take this reboot. Letting us redraw the draw pile. Not the world's greatest P-Box. How do I feel about Runic Dome? I think the deck definitely wants more energy. 
Especially now that we have a heat sinks. And this is gonna fold to awakened one unless something changes. Makes it harder to preserve buffer charges too, if we have running dumb. But I really don't like our odds with the bell or the Pandora's box. Well, actually, unless we get a mummy hand, which would solve everything. So that's worth thinking about. Ice cream would be pretty good too. And we do have an art of war, don't forget. Although Art of War and these two FDLs really don't like each other. Okay, I'm more seriously considering the Culling Bell now. Get a, co a common, an uncommon, and a rare relic right away. Getting us deeper into the relic pool. With so many relics, the likelihood that any particular one is amazing keeps increasing. That bird face urn could be legendary as well. Man, do I like energy here, letting us more comfortably play the Sender, letting us more comfortably play the Creative AI. I really don't like the loss of intents. I'll take the Bell. We're going to try to do this on three base energy. What do we get? We do get a Curse, but we also get Ice Cream. So, you know. And a Molten Egg, letting us add only upgraded attacks from here on out. With the Prayer Wheel, we will see a lot of upgraded attacks. So that's pretty exciting. Hey, hey, everyone. Did you know that you can now support me directly on YouTube by getting a channel membership? For as low as five bucks a month, you'll get all access to perks like custom badges and emojis to use in comments and discounts on the merch store, all while helping support me and this channel to do what I love every day. Just click the join button below to get started. Now back to the video. And a nunchaku, of course, to reward us with some energy here and there. All right, can we get more than two elites this time? Yes, we can get three. Slightly more than two. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll do three elites. And I actually, uh, not have to, but I'm going to visit a shop first. Probably going to go four combats in a row, then to a shop. That way we get to look at eight card reward screens. Vault Amos, thank you so much for the Baker's Metric Dozen. Something, something. Frozen Egg affect Creative AI? No, Mopkin. The Egg Relics only affect cards that are permanently added to your deck, so nothing generated during combat. Uh, in order for cards created during combat to be upgraded, you need the Master Reality Power from Watcher, and that would upgrade cards from Creative AI. Oh, did I want to plan around the... Okay, I will get a guaranteed chest. Cool. Just one with just one. Okay, so we're going to draw a sender, and I'm going to play it. There's dude. Kind of a crap drawer, though, you know? Hmm. Algorithm 2. I'm just going to play that reboot. Considering using the fire potion here, I'm just gonna do it. Second beam cell's okay. Tempest Plus is interesting. I really want more frost cards. Don't think I want the fusion either. Opt out of everything. Scrape Frozen Eye is kind of cool, actually. That's a good point. Scrape Frozen Eye is hella cool. Just the coolest. Don't forget that you have ice cream. There's no need to frivolously spend your energy, sir. See if I can win without playing any more attacks. Looks pretty easy here. I can go with looks pretty easy. 
did not play my um, self-repair there. Okay, guaranteed actual focus, but what about an aggregate plus, gaining us energy for every three cards in the draw pile? Is that not way better with ice cream? I think that's way better with ice cream. Now, if the defrag said plus, I, we could talk about it, but I, I need to take this card. Give me that. And I also need to take this card, because this deck needs way more frost than it currently has. Hologram wasn't bad either. Hype. Pen Nib, Akabeko, Chill Plus, Blizzard. Burp. Not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Oh, and we have uh, we have a uh, reboot to go with the aggregate even for bonus points. Tools asked, "Do I ever take the boss relic that gives you a frost orb, the frozen core?" I think Frozen Core is a really cool relic. I very rarely take it because I feel like it's fairly unusual for Frozen Core to be incredible, but I really enjoy when I take it because I think it's a really cool relic. Very good in conjunction with lots of orb slots if you can get them, so something like the Runic Capacitor from a store can be a great way to get started. Or just regular copies of Capacitor. Let's focus. Actually, a second Recursion Plus is interesting as well. Interesting. Works really well with Inserter, too. I've always wanted to have a Frozen Core Inserter run, but I don't believe I've ever made it work. Yes, Fork Dud. Turbo with Ice Cream does mean that Turbo is always positive for energy. It might not be positive for draw, though, so we may want to avoid playing it sometimes because of that, if we have enough energy. Beam is kind of tempting. The problem is I don't have the focus to support these double recursions. Yet... I really ought to take this consume, huh? Let's take consume. Orcus! Must gain Forcus. Have that, sir. But I picked fusion? No, we turned down a fusion. Want more frost? First and foremost, frost is what I want. Um, taking damage is what I want. But only exactly seven damage, please. Can I play? I draw three. Yes, I can. And then I can play Turbo Center Plus. One. A donk. Not that, though. Thank you. It's better. Oh, don't you dare. Don't you even dare. Oh crap. Ow. Did that to myself. Didn't see the block there. Very well. Except that this is life now. Version. Do like machine learning for more card draw. 
So we ended up with a Parasite Curse there, which is a little unfortunate. We'll slow us down a bit. But that's okay. We can remove it. We'll lose a few max HP, but we can just remove it. Another cruel headed is here. I do like that. We're taking an innate artifact. Useful with potions, useful with things that aren't potions. Definitely not going to take a second self-repair. Doubly so at full HP. I think I am just going to remove the parasite immediately. Clockwork is a shop-only relic, that's correct. White noise. Ah, I'm not creative AI. Right, surely that's good enough, smiley face. Surely. What a speed potion for Awakened One. Tech needs a lot of upgrades now. Those are not going to happen, so we're going to have to make do with unupgraded draw cards? That hurts. Mostly I want to get Consume and Heat Sinks upgraded, with Consume, I think, being the priority. Okay. I want to go this way. Onk. Machine learning draws consume, huh? Next turn we draw. Stop. Not gonna become frail? Okay. This way, then. Take my Artifor energy and my, um... Charge battery energy. And we'll just get attacked for a whole lot this turn. All of it. Easy. Actually cool with uh, Nunchaku on 9, Pendib on 6, going into this elite fight. Oh, don't do that. Yes, more upgraded Frost cards. Horsefield Plus also seems pretty good, be being absolutely massive Blanc. Once we've played enough powers for zero cost, I'll take them both. next turn. Actually, we have Akabeko Blizzard next turn. That might be fine. Certainly Gremlin Horn is going to bail us out here. Energy, please. 17. So if I use this Flex Potion, we'll actually kill all of them and draw four. Given what I'm drawing, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. 
Five energy, please. Thanks. Good stuff. Nice try, crazy snake lady. Nice. Really like this heat sinks. Ooh. Shovel, not gonna get used, but the helix giving us one buffer at the start of each fight is excellent, and an upgraded hologram so that we may repeatedly fetch things in the discard pile, such as aggregate or turbo or blizzard, is also excellent. Okay, I think this deck is really starting to come together, even though it is 36 cards now. Thanks to the Frozen Eye and our fairly generous card draw. Which is going to get only more generous here. I am going to take the Zinc Bottle over the Sapphire Key. Noting that Tiny Chest is on two. We may get another guaranteed chest this act on our current path that we can take the Blue Key from. I think the Ink Bottle is going to be much better than the Average Relic. And I think card draw is exceedingly valuable for this deck. So I'm going to take this. Yoink. But don't panic, we will get the blue key. It's coming, I assure you. Have to use this to save buffer? I will do so. Look at all that energy from turn one aggregate, by the way. In before it inevitably betrays us, in before it argues with the ice cream constantly. Consumer's up top here. Yeah, we really just need more card draw. Fortunately, the heat sinks is a bit further down. So I think I just need to hologram the cool header, right? It's also making us more frost orbs, so that's important too. Veggie bread, thank you so much for the party. The rating party of 18. Thank you so much for the standing desk advice the other day. As you can see, we're now using one. And Gunter Parzival, thank you so much for the congrats on the new setup. I don't see your sub message anywhere. But thank you for the... Oh, no, there it is. Thank you so much for 20 months. I am very much enjoying the new setup. I'm very much enjoying the new place. I'm very happy to be here live. Can I stand it? Ha! Huh? Yes. Why, yes, I can. Do you know that Sunder Plus deals 144 damage? Excuse me. 163 damage. It is time. I don't like that Turbo Plus is the bottom card of the deck here, but I don't know that I can do a lot about it. After all, it is time. Awesome place. Wood bar. Hello. Hello, hello. All right, not too bad. We get a stone calendar, which will help out uh, against the heart, especially with some damage. Another Cold Snap Plus or a loop. Now that we have a Consume, I need this loop, although I really don't like that it's not upgraded. Dakrim, thank you so much for the Prime sub and the three months. And one true leaf. What's the Defect's favorite breakfast cereal? Root Loops. Maybe it's just another Cold Snap Plus. Yeah, imagine me being able to see what Ink Bottle's on. Meh. I'm going to take this loop. Ooh. Can donate a rare card. No, not that one. 
This one? For 10 max HP, giving up Reboot seems reasonable. We could also just give up a regular card. Treat this as a straight-up removal. So it's whether I value the max HP or the remove more. I think I value the max HP more. Look at that. Take our last two relics. This act. Second version of Reptomancer. Oopst. I am relatively happy to see here. Although looking at these draws, I'm a bit concerned. I like that we have a Blessing of the Forge. That might actually be invaluable for heart. I'm going to do my best to preserve this potion. Definitely want to draw these. What is Ink Bottle on? Oh, that, that answers that. <laughs> I found out. I have discovered the answer. It was on nine. Okay. Mercy from the Repto. Good. Six plus nine kills you. Just want to retain this algorithm for next turn, probably. Play the turbo now. Wish you could rearrange the relics on the relic bar. That would be really helpful. On five. Okay, so we're just going to end our turn here. All right, it's the big turn. And I think we can draw this blizzard. In fact, I guarantee we can draw this blizzard. We have one from Ink Bottle, one from Cool Headed, one from Gremlin Horn. And then we're going to draw a lot more from Gremlin Horn. This does 18. What? No! Wait, wait, wait. We got it, we got it, we got it. Aha! The card draw. Let's play that now since this fight is over. Oops. Oh, we drew it, drew it anyway. Nice. Easy game. It's in the draw pile. Garbage. Easy. Mob Bank Data Disk. Wow. Mob Bank is actually really good here because we have membership card and the courier. Remember, so we're at essentially a 2.4 times multiplier on our income. And we can use all the money we get. 12 gold per floor. There are. One, two, three, four, five, six. The two bosses and the, the heart room. Um, the fire in the shop itself, that's eight times 12, 96 gold. Is that how that works? Yeah, 96 gold. Which is over 200 gold worth of purchasing power. That's pretty good. That's on average more than one relic. And of course, plus one focus from Data Disk is huge. And look what come back reboot here. Oh, sorry, it is actually two and a half. One divided by 0 0.4. That's correct. 2.5 times multiplier on the gold. Give me that. Transient could be a bit of a meanie here. Transient could definitely be a bit of a meanie. Um, 13 plus 14 is 39. We were one short here. I do have to play Equilibrium. Fine. I want to keep the buffer. Don't want to use the Akabako or our energy here. I want to draw Heat Sinks next turn. Very important that I get that down. Heat Sinks. Blocking the machine learning that we can team cell sunder. Yeah, we're gonna be good. We're gonna be fine. Might as well. 
play that since it's essentially free. 20 no commons. It sounds. It sounds hard. It sounds real hard. But I like it. Okay. We keep our buffer this turn, everything will be good. Did. Huzzah. You know, I'm not even actually sure why this deck slaps so hard, but it sure do. T Ball, thank you so much for that six months in that prime sub. Half of your get? Ooh, go for the eyes, get. Go for the eyes, get again. Second copy of Blizzard, get. But more realistically, Capacitor get, so that we can get more orb slots to go with the focus from the consume. Although yet another card that desperately wants an upgrade. I will take a go for the Eyes Plus though, especially with our hologram. Strength Potion or Dex Potion? You there, Strength or Dex? Dex. There's our guaranteed chest with the blue key in it over Thread and Needle. Thread and Needle's pretty good, but I'm going to go ahead and say that the ink bottle was probably better. And we have to recall here. Okay, Time Eater should be pretty doable with Creative AI. I think our big problem is Awakened One. I suspect we, we scale fast enough for Donu and Deca. But this old slug is going to prove a problem for us, that's for sure. Get our Frost Orbs deployed. Uh, we're blocking for 16 plus... No, no, no. Do get there with the Dex Potion, though. Keep the buffer intact. Really worth this. Also upgrade, but I, I really think this potion is quite valuable. So I'm gonna do this. Basically just need to get set up against this enemy, who only scales when we play powers. We just want to play a bunch of powers. Or, sorry, only scales when we play cards. Excuse me, not when we play powers. That's a weakened one. So, once we get ourselves to a state where we no longer need to play cards, life's going to be good. Let's roll this turnover. You have to be careful about playing unnecessary cards. Still have buffer here. Buffer is going to happen then. It's fine. Okay, this could be a bit spooky. Only three cards this turn. 12 by 3 headed our way. I'm thinking cool headed recursion. Weaken that time eater. No problem. Exact Loxies. Nice waffles, Ahem. I think we have this under control now. More powers get added. And we start to scale up dramatically. I'm gonna get rid of some of these slimes. Eco form. So we go one, two, three, four, play aggregate, play echo form. Cool. Good job, Prozodine. Oh, 
Oh, right. I have Ekaform now. So now we just start duplicating powers that scale us. Okay, and I think we can just go for lethal pretty soon here. Old storm. Yeah, let's just go double storm here. Zoom. It is biased. Brings time meter below half HP. And we'll kill either this turn or next turn, probably. Especially with super duper electrodynamics. Nippity zoomity. Give that slug. Okay. That went well. Here is the Awakened One. We have to be much more cautious here, because... I don't want to play all of the powers, or even necessarily any of the powers. I do want to play a Capacitor, though. That's going to be it. That's going to be a thing. Uh, we want to chill before Capacitor, so the Recursion makes a Frost Orb. Next turn we draw Consume, then we get Hologram to Consume again. That sets us up pretty well. We do have to face a nasty multi-tank either this turn or next, thankfully next. Looks like I'll have to buffer this hit. That's fine. Actually wait, do I? 24, I just have to block for 12. Hey look, I block for 12. Easy. We gain five energy next turn. We'll headed into aggregate. Sounds aggregate. We're doing an aggregate job. Bonk. Cool. I think we have this fight under control. I guess we never didn't have it. Cool. Good. I like to hear it. Um, so now we do want to play certain powers. 9 times 3 is more than 6 times 4, right? Yeah. Let's do it one more time. And... It becomes 12 by 4, we get plus 9, plus 8. It is technically a net gain to loop one time, so I will loop one time. Which means I'll loop every time. Uh, 27, 27, yeah, we're good. And might as well play this, since we already played an attack this turn. Beautiful turn. I think this fight is... ideal. Heat sinks I don't think I'm going to play. At least not in phase one. Uh, do I want to draw any of this stuff? Mostly we're just looking to scale up the blizzard now. How do I make that happen best? I still want to exhaust this stuff? Sure. We can keep the weaken up, all the better. It's the fine turn. Be a bit of a slow fight, but once we get there, we're gonna be there. You know what they say, wherever you go, there you are. Right now, we're here. I do think I will play the creative AI. We're only going to play some of the powers generated by it, notably capacitors, loops, hmm, echo forms. An example of where we don't want to play turbo now that I have 20 energy. 
That's too many. Defrag won't be worth it unless I can get more orb slots. Currently don't have. But I do have an Echo Form. You better believe I'm playing it. A double hologram. Where's Blizzard? Draw pile. Slow but steady, merciless scaling. That's us. Really do want to keep that weakened up. Awaken one is one of the big reasons this deck took a go for the eyes in the first place. The dupe that uh, genetic too. We kill the heart fast enough. I think we will, thanks to bronze scales and stone calendar. Our relics alone will deal two to three hundred damage. All right, now I can just play every power. And I will. Blizzard. We're also going to draw a lot more cards against Heart because I won't be refraining from playing the heat sinks. see, once we actually put all the powers in play, we're pretty quick at what we do. We have absolutely enormous card draw and absolutely enormous energy generation. And you better believe I'm upgrading this Heat 6 for Act 4. Look at that card draw. Okay, do I want... I think I want Akabeko Pendib thingy. Seems really important for um, Spire, Spear, and Shield. So that is what I'm going to try to do here. Have fun with the thorns, nerd. GG. GG. To thump, to thump. The pulsing dread. He felt throughout the room. Is this part of the spire? There's quite a few good upgrades. Capacitor is another option. Uh, it's part of why I was so closely hoarding the Blessing of the Forge. We'll just upgrade the things that we couldn't get upgraded and maybe upgrade powers from the Creative AI at the same time. But I'd like to upgrade Loop. I'd like to upgrade Capacitor. I'd like to upgrade Heat Sinks. I only get to choose one for realsies, though. I could just dig, but no, I'm going to upgrade the heat sinks for the card draw. And there's going to be a seek in the store. Easy. There's going to be a meteor strike in the store. Could take a second blessing of the forge. It's kind of cute. An additional thorns pot would really help against the heart. This meteor strike is actually quite playable thanks to ice cream. I'm also pretty tempted by the Cauldron, giving us five potions to look at. Hey, Lord, thank you so much for the ten months, that full metric year. Another copy of Loop's not bad either. Two Loops, it's like one upgraded Loop. But Loopier. 
And don't forget, with Courier, when we buy a card, there will be something, or Relic, there will be something new behind it. What skills could we upgrade? Defends are pretty meh. Dual Cast is okay. Overclock is great. Cool Headed is great. Reboot is great. Okay, lots of pretty good upgrades here. So I also like the War Paint for two random skill upgrades. Card removal is pretty good too. Let's start with the loop. What's behind the loop? Hello World. I'm going to stop there. Master Strategy, I think, is very good, especially with the Frozen Eye. Yeah, basically everything is some level of good. War Paint. Wow, Cool Headed and Reboot got upgraded. That is good. I'm going to remove a card. I'm going to Master Strategy, and I'm going to buy the second Forge Potion, because I can't buy the second Liquid Bronze. Or, because I can't buy the Liquid Bronze, rather. So we'll have two hands that we can upgrade. That's pretty cool. Sunder in the opening hand, yes. Aggregate in the opening hand, also yes. Tons of card draw, also yes. We're going to absolutely donk these nerds. Good. Let the donketing begin. I'm going to take the opportunity to quickly and easily eliminate the Spire Shield, I believe. Look at that, 13 energy. Sunder does 80 here. Although I could do 80 and then hologram it back. Uh, math time. So we do Sunder, Core Surge, Hologram, Sunder. 80 plus 11 plus 32. 123, not quite a kill. With no damage in the draw pile. Looks like we just barely don't get there. Although we do get to play Reboot. Yeah, I think I'll just kill the shield. Seems the easiest. Do this. Donk you. Um, donk you. Not gonna play this yet, but I am gonna hologram. I think aggregate actually. For more energy. Yes. Excellent. And we draw algorithm next turn. Perfect. Perfect fight. Play that turbo. Oops. I don't want the Nunchaku on nine for the heart. Value the energy more than damage. Deck seems good now. Beautiful. And the <laughs> and a third blessing of the forge. My God. I'll definitely take another cool headed. Forty one cards. Which one do I discard? Left or right? Chat. Left or right? But we banish to the nether realm. Right. Right. It is. That's the right answer. Nothing. Look at that spicy turn one aggregate. Beautiful. And ink bottles here on eight, even though I wasn't even looking at it. 
Best of all, Incense Burner does do something if you uh, get it from the Elites just before the heart. That'll block the first attack of the second... Or no, the second attack of the second cycle, turn six. It's a lot of relics, right? That's... And we only fought two Elites in Act 2. This was a low-end Black Star. One of those bargain bin Black Stars, you know? So we do one, two, three, four. FTL draws into a Cinder's Bane. I'm gonna hologram the FTL if I need to. Let's meet a cool-headed Turbo. We want to be able to draw Algorithm and go for the eyes during the attack turns here. We could use upgrades to get more cards into our hands. That's probably what I'm going to do. So then on the second turn, I draw a cool-headed overclock. That's draw five. That gets me to algorithm, unless the status is. Okay. Not hologramming FTL, am I? Follow the aggregate, that makes sense. It's a good amount of energy, I would imagine. I want this lightning one. <laughs> yes, I want damage. And we have buffer too. And we're not vulnerable. Amazing. Big hit first, beautiful. Wait. Hmm. see. Well, one option we have is to do nothing, and it's actually a pretty good option. It's the only option that saves our buffer, unfortunately. The other option... Five, we don't get to that algorithm. Yeah, the burn will be blocked by our frost orb, so we can just buffer this hit. Problem is, it doesn't get loop in play or anything like that. We don't draw any of these cards that we need to get to. We really wanted to get that creative AI developed. I would be able to weaken it this turn, and I can dual cast the frost orb. We don't take that much damage. Ink bottle is on a low number. No, it's on seven, so we also get bottle. Three, four, five, six. So I'll draw to that defend. And then next turn we can... It'll only be a one times 15. Block it easy peasy like, but the main goal is to create a bay on play. The real problem is that uh, heat sinks is all the way down here. I need to draw some cards. I need to draw some cards real bad. Capacitor? No, we can do better. Okay, that does hurt a bit. I'm not gonna play the turbo. We have plenty of energy. We'll play this. 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 Frost Orb. You're on nine, so I definitely want to send her so that I can loop. And this draw order hurts. I mean, we just have so many cards to draw through. But it's more that our, our card draw is kind of towards the bottom. 
in a concerning manner. There are now two burns. So we're going to need some really good hits from the creative AI soon. That definitely helps. But well, I don't think it's worth the upgrade. So next turn we have cool-headed, cool-headed, consume, machine learning, recursion. Okay, I don't play the reboot. Because these are all very good cards. And I'm going to have a lot of focus. Cool-headed, then consume, then cool-headed, then recursion. That's the way to do it. Marl Dog, thank you so much for 15 months, one and a half metric years. I do want Ink Bottle. Bottle? Ink Bottle. No, I don't. Okay, good luck to us. Not what I had in mind, but definitely acceptable. Still don't upgrade. Let's charge battery next. It's on mine, drawing heat sinks plus. Which means I can, yeah. Heat sinks, hello world, frost orb. Take nothing. We're intangible on this turn. Thank you, Incense Burner. We can play our second consume. I don't like this draw order, but we can fix it with reboot. To reboot or not to reboot? That is the question. This is essentially three, so I might as well. Don't want to draw those cards. Don't know that I want to retain these cards either. But I do want to end with the Frost Orb in front next turn. That's imperative. Stone Calendar is now able to assist on this turn. And we finally got an Echo for him. I like it. Uh, I definitely want to draw more card. I think I'll take a little bit of beat to death damage here to make that happen. I'm not going to play Consume again. I think we need the Orb slots at this point. Cool headed. All the Gram, the Cool Headed. Draw the burn, draw two more. Play the cold snap, keep increasing that frost orb count. I guess I should have used this blessing of the forge somewhere in here. Hmm. Get him, Stone Calendar. Int 82, thank you so much for the prime sub and the four months. Hey, look at that. Hey, look at that. Ooh, hey, look at this. I should have duped the group of the eyes, actually. But I can beam sell your problems away. Got a little bit ahead of myself there, a little bit overexcited, but it doesn't actually matter, thankfully. All is well. Get that card draw. Forty-two damage from the blizzard now. More than 42. Keep some of our energy for next turn. Uh, although I do want to have Frost Orb in the front. Alright, good turn. Okay, now we're correctly remembering that I have an Echo form in play. Let's go Hologram twice to get back Blizzard. And to get back Hologram. Headed to aggregate. So we can 
can go Blizzard, Hologram, Rebound, the Blizzard. And we're there. With one final juicy blizzard for 96. GG. GG, everybody. Hey, hey, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Did you know that I'm live five days a week on Twitch? Come join us to watch me live, ask questions, or chill with the community. Click the link in the description below to follow and be notified when I'm live. And while you're down there, make like a sandwich and sub to this channel for more fresh Baylor content. Ta-ta for now.